Hello again, America. I'm going to start this video off a little bit differently. I'm going to ask you a question. What would you consider a person who sells a product which produces a euphoric effect in the end user that ultimately poisons that end user and is oftentimes fatal to them? By common definition, we would call this person a pusher, a drug dealer. The reason I ask this question is because that is exactly what Dianne Feinstein is and that is exactly what the anti-gun coalition is at its very heart. They don't push pharmaceuticals and they don't push narcotics. Instead, what they push is legislation. It produces a euphoric feel-good effect in those who support them. It makes them think that they're doing something positive. It makes them feel as if they're doing something right. When in effect, this woman is selling us a, po a poison pill. This woman is selling something which is lethal to our very way of life, our freedoms, our liberties, our Bill of Rights, our Constitution, and what made this country what our Founding Fathers believed in. I bring this up for the simple fact that Dianne Feinstein has reintroduced her assault weapons ban. She's changed it and altered it to make it more palatable for our governors, our senators, and our elected officials. Make no mistake, people. You can candy coat poison. Sure, the bitter taste will be gone, undetectable. But in the end, what underlies is still poisonous. It's still lethal. She's changed her bill so that it's more likely to pass. She's changed it so it doesn't seem so radical as some would put it. But in the end, the intention is still very radical and is still lethal to our very way of life. We must continue to write, call, and email our senators now more so than ever to let them know that we will not let this stand, that we will not let this poisonous legislation be passed. I thank you for all that you've done and hope you will continue to do so. I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of any American citizen who is willing to stand up against this and I endorse you. Another part of this poisonous legislation we're seeing is in Massachusetts. Massachusetts requires that all firearms owners have their firearms registered, that they must possess a license to own a firearm. This is already poisonous enough, but now they wish to inst institute a bill into law which forces a firearms owner to carry insurance upon every one of their firearms, a so-called liability insurance. They make the argument that we insure our vehicles, why not insure our firearms? This is a feel-good legislation, but in fact it is a poison pill. Let's take into account that this safety check magazine is empty. Firearm is empty, gun is safe, will be treated as such. This is what I rely on to defend myself from would-be home invaders, attackers, thieves, and anyone who wishes me or my own, my loved ones, bodily harm. This is my right. This is my right to self-defense made tangible. This is, an this is an inalienable right protected by the Constitution of not only my state, but of my nation, the United States of America. This is my right. The reason I show that is because these people wish to turn a right into a privilege. They make the argument, well, we insure our vehicles, why not insure our guns? Here is the reason why we should never insure our guns, why should we should never register our guns. The simple fact that owning a vehicle is not a right. There are no provisions for it within the United States Constitution, state constitutions, or our Bill of Rights. You have the right to safe transport. You have the right to live unafraid. You have the right to defend yourself. But when it comes to transport, there's nothing stating that you have a right to own a vehicle. That is a privilege. The reason they want to turn firearms ownership or any form of self-defense into a privilege 
is because it is far easier to remove a privilege than it is a right. All this is the registration and insurance bill. All it is when you come down to it is a disguised motive for eventual confiscation, for all registration leads to confiscation. And it is also a disguised motive to bring about govern governmentally backed extortion. That's all this is. It is an unfit, undue tax upon the American people of Massachusetts to charge them a tax for their right to self-defense. Their inalienable, constitutionally and Bill of Rights protected right to self-defense. This is deplorable, to say the least. We must act out against this. We must let the anti-gun coalition know that we will not let this stand. I will provide a link below to an article covering this law. As always, I will provide a link below to a link which will allow you to contact your senators, your congressmen, and all of your elected officials, not limited or not limited to anyone, including the president. It will actually the letter you send will go to the president himself, as well as your state's elected officials. I will provide a link to Ruger's well-written letter for self-defense down below. That's a very quick, good, quick solution. I'll also provide a link to Popbox. What Popbox is, it's a way to alert yourself on upcoming bills passing to Congress and the Senate. This allows you to know exactly what's going on and to be able to be equipped to fight this battle that we are stuck in. I thank you for watching my videos. I thank you for putting up with me. But we've got to continue to increase the pressure on our elected officials to let them know that firearms such as this are not a privilege. They are our very right. This is our will to self-defense made manifest, made tangible. This is not an assault weapon. This is not for confiscation. This is not up for debate. This is our right. Our forefathers fought hard for it. We're fighting hard for it now. This is the exact same battle which started our nation. Undue confiscation, undue registration, undue taxation without representation. This is the exact same reason our forefathers, when founding this nation, went to war. So that we could be free free from oppression, free to practice our own beliefs, free to hold those beliefs true, free to speak openly, to be free of illegal, illegal search and seizure and illegal occupation. We are fighting the same fight our forefathers have. We must continue to do them proud. We must continue to fight. Thank you for watching this. Please share this with as many people as you can. Inform as many people as you can. Get active. Get out there. Contact your senators, your congressmen, every elected official, including your sheriff. It doesn't make much sense until you realize that the sheriff is the law of the land. But contact them. Let them know that you do not want these laws to be pushed upon the people of the United States, let alone the people of your state. Get out there and get active, people. I thank you for watching this. And as always, stay positive, America. I will catch you later.